In the last video, we introduced this theorem and did a simple example with it. Let's talk about this theorem a little bit more in depth and then do a more complicated calculation using it. So the thing I want, to, want us to think about, what information do we need for a line in R3 and what information do we need for a plane in R3? So for a line, you need a point on the line and you need a direction vector along the line. But for a plane in R3, so what do we need here? Then we need a plane through the point normal to this vector here. So we need a point on the plane. And again, just like point on a line, we can use any point on the line that we, that we want to. We can use any point on the plane that we want to here. And then we want a direction uh, vector that is normal. Let me underline that to the plane. You can also think of direction vectors orthogonal to the plane. So let's do an example of this, keeping this in mind. So find an equation of a plane through points 1, 0, minus 1, 2, 2, 1, 4, 1, 2. So in general, two points determine a straight line. Three points that are not all collinear, not all on the same line, three points determine the plane. Okay, so how are we doing in comparison with this statement here? Uh, so do we have a point on the plane? Well, we have three points on the plane. That's, that's, that's great. But direction vector normal to the plane. How do we go about coming up with a direction vector that is normal to this plane? And this is going to require just a little bit of cleverness here to find the normal vector. So let me, let me draw some points here. So this might be P1 and P2 and P3. I mean, it looks like they're all falling on this piece of paper. In general, you know, it's, it's, they're going to be floating around in three-dimensional space here. Well, we're looking for a vector, and you can see my, you know, maybe you can see my thumb, I'm, I'm pointing out of the piece of paper here up, up at the camera. We're looking for something that is orthogonal, that is normal to the plane. So think about what recent topics do we have that, get, that produce a vector that's guaranteed to be orthogonal to two given vectors? And you think about it, that should sound like we're going to use the cross product. Because, you know, if we have u cross v here is guaranteed to be orthogonal to u and to v. So, so what, do, what are we going to do here? Well, p1, p2, p3. Now let me form this vector u here. Going from P1 to P2, that's a vector that lies in the plane. I can form this vector V here from P1 to P3. That's a vector that also lies in the plane. So we take the cross product here of U and V. That is guaranteed to be orthogonal. That's guaranteed to be normal. It's orthogonal to the vectors U and V, which both lie in our plane. So it's guaranteed to be normal orthogonal to our plane. Okay, so now our setup is clear. We need to calculate out these two vectors, u and v. And after that, we'll take the cross product and that will give us our normal vector. At that point, we'll have a point and a normal vector and we can use this theorem right here to write down our final answer. Okay, so I drew this from u as a vector from p1 to p2, v as a vector from p1 to p3. 
you, you could have uh, done different combinations of U and V here. You know, you can have U from P2 to P3, V from P2 to P1. That would have also worked. But let's go ahead and just use this. So um, U is going to be, let's see here, um, 2 minus 1 is 1. 2 minus 0 is 2. 1 minus minus 1 is 2. And V is going to be 4. So it's P3 minus P1. Uh, the entries are going to be that. So 4 minus 1 is 3. 1 minus 0 is 1. And 2 minus negative 1 is going to be 3. So we have U is 1, 2, 2. V is 3, 1, 3. So U cross V is going to be I hat J hat K hat 1, 2, 2, the cross product of these three, sorry, these two vectors here. And if you crunch this out, you know, I will leave this as an exercise for you to work out maybe as soon as the video is over, or maybe even just pause here to make sure that you get the same answer as I do for I hat plus 3J hat plus minus 5K hat. And so now, great, we have, what do we need here? Now we have a direction vector that's normal to our plane. And do we have a point? Well, we have three points. We can use any one of these three points that we want to. I'm going to use point P1. You could use P2 or P3 here. But let's, and let's do it as the component equation right here. And so it's going to be four times something plus three times something plus, sorry, minus five times something is equal to zero. X minus something, Y minus something, Z minus something. So all I've done right here is I've taken our normal vector, plopped in four, three minus five, and now I just have to plop in the point that I chose here, which was one, zero, and minus one. So uh, this is our equation of the plane. We can certainly simplify it. If you had done, picked a different point here, if you picked two, two, one, or four, one, two, your equation would look different, but it would still simplify down to the same thing. If you had, um, alternatively, if you had, done a different combination of like this is u and this is v or something like that you may have ended up with some other vector that is maybe perhaps the negative of this and multiplying you know if this is a normal vector multiplier normal vector by minus one also gives us a normal vector so your answer might look different but it could also be completely correct Okay, so I think this is a very important example to understand here. And so it's important enough that I'm going to have a pre-class problem number one for this section based off of it. So find an equation for the plane that contains the point. Oh, um, that's exactly the example. No, wait, wait, wait. Uh, that is not quite. I, I, I saw that 412, 412. So that's, that's the same, but those points there are different. So this is a perfectly fine problem for you to work on.